Brave citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation episode 96. I'm Jeff, and if you're new here, welcome. Nindy Nation is your one-stop weekly shop for everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. And this week, we just crossed 1,000 subscribers. So thank you so, so, so much for all of your support. We've got a big show today with over 50 games to discuss, and between the new releases and great eShop deals toward the end of the episode, we're sure you'll find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. New episodes of Nindy Nation post to YouTube on Tuesday, alongside the podcast feed hosted by our friends at the Nintendo Village. On Fridays, we publish a quick video covering the upcoming weekend's best deals, and Thursdays are reserved for the Nindies at Night stream, which probably won't happen this week because it's Christmas Eve. To keep up with the schedule or just chat about video games, follow us on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Before we jump into the new releases for the week, we always take a look back at the titles that released since our last episode. As you may know, last week on the 15th, Nintendo hosted an Indie World presentation, and they shadow dropped a few big games just as I was uploading last week's episode. Go figure. As such, we've got a pretty exciting lineup to kick off the week, so let's get episode 96 started by taking a look at the 10 neglected Nindies and Indie World shadow drops that released since episode 95. Five of the week's neglected Nindies came during the Indie World presentation, and the first of which needs no introduction despite me still not really understanding what the big deal is, and that's Among Us, the Indie Hit of the Year by Inner Sloth that released for five bucks. While the team of four originally released Among Us in 2018, it wasn't until 2020 that this multiplayer game of figuring out who the imposter is really took off. Basically, you and a group of up to 10 players are on a ship and have menial tasks to complete, but one of you is an imposter hell-bent on taking all of the other crewmates out. You'll chat with other players, watch your back, complete your ship maintenance and preparation tasks, and try to catch the imposter in order to win. And if you're the imposter, well, try to stab everyone in the back, sometimes literally, without getting caught. As with other platforms, Among Us supports cross-platform play, so you shouldn't ever have any trouble finding people to play with, and you can jump into this worldwide phenomenon right now on your Switch for 5 bucks. If you follow me on Twitter at Nindy Nation, you'll know that I totally called last week's Indie World presentation, because last Saturday I wrote up the entire blurb for Capybara's Grindstone, and when I looked at the new release list on Sunday, it had mysteriously been relisted with a date of TBD. At that point, my only assumption was that this game was going to be shadow dropped in a presentation, and as the kids would say, ya boy was right. Here's what I wrote last week and had to shelve at the last minute. Ready your wallets, friends, because Grindstone, one of the biggest mobile games of last year, is finally freed from its Apple Arcade shackles and comes to the Switch by way of Capybara Games for, well, 15 bucks, which is the price of three months of Apple Arcade where it was previously included. Hmm. Okay, so it is a little pricey, but this awesome game is, well, it's kind of a match three game, but just kind of as the core mechanic. There's a lot of cool, unique stuff going on in Grindstone, and if you're watching now, you can already see that the visuals in this game are just... Children earmuffs. Just the right kind of f***ed up. It's like the kind of artwork that you'd see when someone catches you watching Cartoon Network late at night, and they say to you, What the f***? are you watching? You match similar pieces, but then, just like in Puzzles and Dragons or Puzzle Quest, there's all kinds of RPG and combat mechanics at play, too. Grindstone might be a little too pricey for some at 20 bucks or even 15 when it's on sale, and I think I'll be holding off for a deeper discount, but if you're in the mood for any kind of puzzle game, and especially if you like the kind of tone that this game has, you'll definitely get your money's worth with Grindstone. Oddly enough, the next title that Shadow dropped was Dicey Dungeons, which carries a lot of the same descriptors that I just used for Grindstone, but this one plays out as a dungeon-crawling RPG where all of your moves are decided by the roll of a dice. 
It's a bit easier to put this title into a genre as it should be familiar to anyone who's played classic RPGs, whether it be Western PC dungeon crawlers or classic JRPGs, but this game clearly stands apart thanks to its presentation which, and I mean this sincerely, looks a lot like the gross art style you'd see in mobile games, but done really well, as if the team really cared? I haven't played Dicey Dungeons yet for myself, but it is developed by Distractionware Limited or Terry Kavanaugh, who's previously released the well-regarded Super Hexagon and VVVVV. I think it's fair to say that Dicey Dungeons should be well worth its $15 price tag, and it launched on sale for $13.49. Peachy Keen Games also shadow dropped a game during the presentation, this one being their day in the life cat cafe simulator called Calico, which launched for 12 bucks. It's developed by a two person team out of Seattle and published by Whitehorn Digital, who's made a name for themselves by publishing progressive games with impactful stories meant for gamers with any type of skill level. The art style reminds me a lot of Going Under, but with more pastel and just a little less refined. I'm not the biggest fan of what I've seen so far, but I can also tell I'm not the target demographic. Those who are playing it though, and there's a lot of streamers right now playing Calico if you want to see it for yourself, seem to be having a great time. If you're into calming games that let you move at your own pace, you like the visuals that you've seen so far, and of course you love cats, a lot of cats, Calico is making a name for itself within its own little world and seems to be generating a respectful little following. The next title from the team at Toge Productions, who recently released Coffee Talk, is another story-driven point-and-click adventure with very minor interactive elements called When the Past Was Around. Similar to Coffee Talk, the visuals are quite good and mostly hand-drawn, but it also includes some whimsical, otherworldly elements, so it's a bit bizarre. The descriptions are super vague and talk about a girl in her 20s dealing with life, love and loss, and then she falls in love with an owl person? I haven't heard much about this game in terms of reception post-launch, but if emo-stricken girls with a thing for owl people is up your alley, When the Past Was Around is available now for $8.49. Our next title was not a part of the Indie World presentation, and I think it should have been. It also wasn't even announced to be coming to the Switch, and then just kind of dropped out of nowhere, but I think you should check it out. Tuhu Luna Nights, that's how I'm pronouncing it, let me know if I'm butchering it, is a very by-the-book homage to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, but it takes place in the anime-inspired world of Tuhu, which, if I'm not mistaken, is largely a Japan-only hardcore shmup series with a deep narrative. As such, a lot of the world building was lost on me, but it was a great time nonetheless when I played through this game on my PC a few months ago and I enjoyed it so much that I played through it a second time on my Xbox One. On both platforms, it did tend to get a bit framey, so I'm concerned about the performance on the Switch, but I did appreciate the well-designed world and interesting time-shifting combat mechanics that added just enough to the formula to keep the combat fresh and rewarding. If you like vanillaware titles such as Odin Sphere or Muramasa, I think Tuhu Luna Nights is right up your alley, and the whole game is a succinct 5 or 6 hours long. Between the structure, the length, and the engaging combat, I liked Tuhu for a lot of the same reasons I fell in love with Time Spinner. With all of that said though, we need to see how the performance pans out on more limited hardware, and I think 18 bucks is a bit steep, everything considered, but even with no previous knowledge of the series, I really enjoyed my time with Tuhu Luna Nights, and it's available now for $17.99. If you decide to hold off for now, I'll definitely be including this game in future deals lists as soon as it goes on sale. And now, our last four titles are pretty standard fare for neglected nindies, and the first batch is an interesting block-pushing puzzle game that I might recommend if the entire premise didn't revolve around revealing pictures of scantily clad women. As such, the mature-rated action puzzle game Crawl Co. Block Knockers, released from East Asia Soft for $7.19 and, uh, hmm, yeah... I got a joke written here, but I don't think I'm going to make it. Secrets of Magic 2, Witches and Wizards is another puzzle game, this one by Join Dots for $9.99, and it's a match-three variant that looks like it carries some influence from Mahjong. 
I don't know. The Suicide Guy collection also hit the Switch this week by way of Chubby Pixel, and it's a pretty stupid 3D physics game based around a pretty stupid concept of a drunk guy's dreams. The collection is $8.79. And the last neglected Nindy of the week is the game that we've all been waiting for. Animal Pals Bubble Pop is a ripoff of Bust a Move by Digital Game Group, complete with mobile game art and interface to boot, and you can save $7.99 by not buying that one. Despite those last few titles, probably one of the best neglected Nindies lists we've had this year. I considered making a separate Indie World video, but there weren't a huge amount of titles, and the ones that are most interesting either dropped immediately or are coming out fairly soon, so we'll get to them as they release. I'm all about jumping back into Tuhu if it can keep the frame rate up. If so, I'll probably pick it up for another romp through that world, as I always appreciate a game that can accomplish so much without overstaying its welcome. Dicey Dungeons is right there on my list, too, and there's no denying the phenomenon that is among us. Maybe I should try it. What about you? Let me know what you're picking up or adding to your wish list in the YouTube comments or on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Now that we've looked back, it's time to look ahead to the coming week, and there's a good deal to be excited about, especially with the port of one of my favorite indie series that dates all the way back to Nintendo's first indie efforts back on the Wii. Here are the 27 Nindies hitting the eShop from December 21st through the 27th. Grin Robot and the folks at Turnox get the ball rolling this week with an interesting little title called Smart Moves that drops on the 21st for $5.99. Now, the game's description is some of the most borked English I've ever seen, but you're essentially dropped into single-screen challenge rooms that look like a classic top-down adventure, but each room provides a clue and a puzzle to solve. It kind of reminds me of the quick thinking that you have to do in the WarioWare series. Scan the room, identify the hazards, and use the poorly translated clue to figure out the path ahead. It's hard to tell what level of quality we're looking at here, but Smart Moves mixes a couple of genres together to create something that I can't say we've seen much of, and that just might be enough to give it a shot. If you prefer your puzzles with a more modern aesthetic, the team at Nerd Monkeys, now that's a great studio name, release their Traffic Flow Puzzler called Traffics for $3.99. The visuals are simple and bold, which helps since you'll spend your time monitoring traffic patterns and adjusting the intersection lights as needed to ensure the most efficient flow of traffic possible. There's no shortage of these types of games on the Switch, but the visuals and price work together to create one of the more interesting options available. And the unique little twists on puzzlers keep coming when Village Bench releases their side-scrolling, retro-styled Killer Chambers for $9.99. Set inside of 40 different levels, your goal is to survive a gauntlet of booby traps until you make your way to the next room. $10 is probably a bit much, but this could be a little fun game to add to your wish list, and it claims to be accompanied by some visual novel storytelling about the conflict between Brave Lord and Lord Grave, which I'm sure doesn't get confusing in the least. Three titles release on Tuesday the 22nd, the first of which is Landflix Odyssey by Fantastico Studio for $14.99. I'm immediately interested in this one because this is the team who developed Black Paradox, a space shooter I've mentioned frequently in the past. If the logo and name make you think of Netflix, you're probably on the right track, as this is a collection of five different, smaller games, mostly 8-bit platformers that are tongue-in-cheek references to TV series. You've got Peculiar Stuff, Elder Thrones, Going Mad, and the like, with each having its own blend of platforming, combat, and puzzle solving. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be anything too interesting besides the quirky themes, so it's hard to jump in blind, especially for 15 bucks. but it might be worth checking out some more gameplay and making that decision for yourself. Modus Games have published a bunch of indies on the Switch, including the Trine series, Scully, and the recent Remothered, but their overall output has been a bit all over the place, so it's hard to know where their $30 release on the 22nd will land. Override 2 Super Mech League is a 3D mech combat game that plays out in one-on-one -on -one or 2v2 matches and includes a couple of minigame modes as well. Outside of that, there really isn't much more to talk about here, so especially at 30 bucks, unless you're a diehard anime-inspired mech combat game aficionado, 
And then I guess even if you aren't, it's probably safe to move on. Ugh. This next one's a real treat. Filed under, do these people really not have anyone in their life brave enough to tell them that this idea is dumber than sh**? <laughs> How's this for a pitch? Are you sick and tired of living in a world of pandemic lockdown with most of your life restricted and isolated due to said pandemic? How about a bottom of the barrel thing that barely qualifies as a game called Isolation Story where, for $10, you can witness the day-to-day -day monotony of a person who is in lockdown after a virus called, wait for it, Virus 19 has placed their city into the worst possible representation of the one thing we all wish we didn't have to deal with anymore. When researching the publisher Isla Collier, every single result in Google generated a 404 error, which is the best sign of things to come. When looking at the developer Elucius Music and Gaming's Twitter page, they actually market this game as the COVID game. This developer, this publisher, and this game can eat my whole ass. Whole thing. All of it. But never fear, because from every pile of sh** grows a flower, and our next title is sitting pretty as the Nindy Nation pick of the week. One of the earliest indie darlings started as a Flash game in 2008 called Meat Boy. What followed was a brutally, infuriatingly challenging platformer that became a smash hit on every platform imaginable called Super Meat Boy. <laughs> I swear, you could play this game on a toaster, but it's so hard you'd probably end up burning your house down. Anyways, over the past few years, Team Meat, comprised of Edmund McMillan and Tommy Refenis, have been hard at work crafting literally thousands of new levels and rebuilding the engine to look modern and beautiful, and the fruit of their labor is finally arriving on the Switch this Wednesday, December 23rd, as Super Meat Boy Forever. Besides getting a facelift across the board, this long-awaited sequel follows the story of Meat Boy and Bandage Girl a few years after the events of Super Meat Boy, and will have you running, jumping, punching, sliding, and wall jumping your way through even more rage-inducing levels. But every time you eke out a victory, ugh, you'll bask in the wonder of seeing all of your previous attempts play out at once, and rest assured that you are definitely the only person to have ever completed that level. This time, however, with so many levels, every new game brings with it brand new challenges. If you can't tell, I am super excited to play this game, even though it's going to be much more difficult now that I have children in the house. So I'm going to have to watch my language. Now, the question, though, is should you get this game? I think the answer is clear, but allow me to be direct. This game is going to be among the hardest, if not easily the hardest game you'll ever play. Know that going into it. The levels are short, the retries are instant, and the only thing to get mad at is your own skill, but again, that moment of achievement when you do clear a level is just intoxicating. Take that as you will and decide if the game is right for you. If it is, Super Meat Boy Forever launches for $19.99 and includes more content than you can likely ever get through. And I cannot wait to endlessly fail my way through these stages in the next Nindies at Night. <laughs> Earmuffs, children. The following day is Christmas Eve for the millions of people who celebrate it, but hey, if you don't, or you're just really bored because you don't have elaborate princess castles to assemble while moderately drunk at 2 in the morning like yours truly, well, there are still seven indies releasing on Thursday the 24th. I think I'll take drunk princess castle building over our next one though, because Kingdom Tales is just boring mobile game castle building and the 10 bucks I could save on buying that is easily enough to get me from moderately drunk midnight builder to surprisingly drunk genius architect. Sorry, Ocean Media. Black Fox Entertainment and Starcom Entertainment sound like names Kojima rejected when writing Metal Gear Solid. But actually, their studios, who are releasing JDM Racing 2 for $4.99, and say, If you're a car enthusiast, this game is definitely for you. Wait, hold on. Let me, let me just fix this here. Okay, alright. What they meant to say is, If you like your racing games to look two generations old and redline up against 25 frames per second, this game is definitely for you. 
The next game actually looks cool for you horror fans, though, and it comes by way of Jandusoft. The Last Dead End is a psychological horror game that plays out in the first and third person perspectives and includes first person shooting as well as interactive puzzles. Just a little bit of everything with a story revolving around a thousand year old religion. For some reason, the visuals remind me of the tones set in the IDOS PC games of yesteryear, you know, like in the original Thief games. That's a good thing. It's only $9.99 and looks surprisingly good for the price, too. Wait a second, this next game is also by John Dusoft, and hold up, the next three games, four games total, releasing on Christmas Eve, are by John Dusoft? What is this, the bigger than Jesus drop? Alright, well, let's fire through these. Elliot is a side-scrolling 16-bit platformer that's supposed to be super hard and doesn't look very good at all. That one's 10 bucks. Kyle's Treasure is basically trying to be Indiana Jones the game, but with a charming low-poly art style and more jank than Colorado has snow in January. It might be worth it on sale, but not for 10 bucks. And I imagine the pitch for Spirit Arena was something like this. Hey, check out this little tech demo I've been working on. I'm trying to learn how to make a two-player twin-stick shooter. That cool, but why does it look so, you know, like that? Oh, I just grabbed whatever assets I could find for free. You know, I've seen worse games. I bet you could sell this. Sell this? It's not even a full game. I mean, look at it. Who would publish this? John Dusoft. Definitely John Dusoft. They'll publish anything. You think somebody would buy it? It's not even finished. I mean, it worked for Cyberpunk. Yeah! Touché. Let's see how long we can get away with this being 10 bucks. And last on the big Thursday drop, Flynn's Arcade releases Column No for $1.99, and it could be a fun little diversion. There's a ball on top of a column, and you rotate said column to get the ball to drop through various geometric challenges, and it's done with super simple visuals that I kind of like. On Christmas Day, Friday, December 25th, there's actually quite a few games releasing, but a big batch of them, six to be exact, are the beloved indie darlings The Bit Trip series, and I got a lot to say about these games. I'm very conflicted here. First of all, shout out to Cubic Games for getting this collection from Choice Provisions ported to the Switch, as these are six arcade-style games that epitomize unique, addictive score-chasing action, and they carry an art style uniform across the releases that marries Atari-like visuals but with 3D depth. Each game has an excellent gameplay hook with music that represents some of the best chiptunes out there. Each title is five bucks, and some are better than others, we'll get to that in a second, but I'm really surprised there's no collection released as well, because on the Wii, Wii U, and 3DS, there is. In fact, if you have a 3DS, I strongly suggest getting on Amazon right now and buying the physical copy of the Bit Trip Saga, because it's only 14 bucks, they've only got 17 copies left, and it's definitely going to be a collector's item someday. Plus, each game looks awesome with the 3D turned on. Okay, so I'm just not sure. If you think you'll get a couple of these games, if it's better to wait for a collection or something? So I guess buyer beware a bit, because while $30 for all six games isn't bad, I think that'll probably change, and I have a feeling the 3DS collection is still going to be the best way to play these. So the games. Bit Trip Runner is probably the most widely known and easiest to recommend. It's a side-scrolling auto-runner that plays out one level at a time along to some fantastic chiptune music, and you should check out this one for sure. Bit Trip Fate is a side-scrolling shooter and one of the more visually impressive games of the mix. It's not the best shmup out there, but it is a great companion if you already own any of the others in the series. And then there's Bit Trip Beat and Bit Trip Flux, which are the first and last games released in the series, and they're the same type of game with Flux acting like a sequel. They are, how do I say this? They're like music-based Pong, but for one player. And they're really good too. Beat is probably more than enough, but I'll tell you, this game can get you in the zone in a way that few others can. The last two games I'm not as fond of, and they're pretty weird in concept with Bit Trip Core basically being a rhythm game, and Bit Trip Void being this bizarre entry that falls somewhere between Pac-Man and an obstacle avoidance minigame. 
All in all, these games are probably a must-own for people who love indie games. I mean, we owe a lot to this series, and they're still mostly great to this day. The trailer for the games includes all six titles in one, so I have to think that a collection is on the way. My recommendation is that if you think just one of these games looks super appealing, maybe Runner or Fate, and you've got some gold coins to spare, go for it. Otherwise, I'd feel really bad suggesting you buy them all now for 30 bucks if in a couple of months we're going to get a $20 package that gathers all of the games into one icon. Either way, great, great games with awesome soundtracks that you're definitely hearing in this week's episode. Phew! Can you believe it? We've still got three more titles releasing just in time for Jesus' birthday, and then four more on Saturday, which is weird. But don't worry, <laughs> I don't think this will take long. Super Power Up Games releases Dungeonoid for $6.99, which is a new spin on the classic Arkanoid or Brick Breaker game, but with RPG elements. It's got online leaderboards and two-player co-op, and I think it looks pretty rad. And hide your children, because Mindscape is back with a $10 game, and I'm going to read the title and, and then move on, because you can probably guess what I think about Match 3 Pirates, heir to Davy Jones. <laughs> Similarly, take everything I just said, drop the price to $7.99, and apply it to Candy 2048 Challenge. <laughs> I mean, I guess it could be worse. They could be trying to capitalize off of a pandemic. The COVID game. What a bunch of shitheads. On the 26th, we round out the week with four releases, and the first one is a good fit for those of you who like the top-down action titles where you have to clear a room as efficiently as possible. Think like Hotline Miami or Party Hard. Door Kickers comes to us for $11.99 by Cubic Games, and while it doesn't carry the visual fidelity of the other titles I just mentioned, its focus on being a SWAT team means that it adds more squad and tactical elements to the genre. Door Kickers has been out on the PC for a while, where it's received overall positive reviews, and has a good variety of challenges on offer if you like this top-down tactical approach to this style of game. And if you were excited about Door Kickers up until I started talking about strategy and tactics, then the Hong Kong Massacre is probably the game for you, and one that I'll be picking up this week as well when it releases from Untold Tales for $15.99. It's a top-down action shooter where you're playing as a badass former cop with nothing to lose. Think of it like top-down Max Payne because you're jumping off buildings, flipping around in slow motion, and doing all kinds of stuff you'd see in the movies that inspired this game. Now, the reviews are pretty tepid, so buyer beware, especially at $15.99, but I personally love this kind of game and will be giving it a shot for myself, so stay tuned on Twitter at Nindy Nation or stop by the next Nindies at Night if you want to see more before you buy The Hong Kong Massacre. Man, I feel like someone just woke up at Cubic Games because they've been quiet for a while, but they're releasing like 10 games this week alone. Their last release this week is Dungeon Top, a roguelike deck-building RPG for $13.99. You get the cards and you place them on a board where your strengths and weaknesses are determined based on what cards are adjacent to them. You know, like Triple Triad in Final Fantasy VIII or Joustus from Shovel Knight. It doesn't look bad, but I'd prefer to play either of the previously mentioned games before this one. Either way, I appreciate its addition to this week's release list, because it is a card-based dungeon crawler with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! And last this week, disappointing everyone, is Cube Life Island Survival by Cipronia, who as far as I can tell, is one of those developers that built a business off of releasing ripoff games for whatever the flavor of the week is. This Minecraft ripoff released on the Wii U in 2015, then went to mobile platforms and is coming back to the Switch for 15 bucks, just in case your kids were already on the naughty list this year and you ran out of coal. Now that is a big list of games. Obviously, I'm excited for the Bit Trip series, and Super Meat Boy Forever is easily the pick of the week. But what stands out for you? Let me know in the comments, and if you say the COVID game, I'm going to downvote you. 
but that's no way to keep up with the Christmas spirit, so hey. If you ended up with some extra eShop funds after the holiday haul, let's go find a way to spend those digital dollars. The eShop just launched a big ol' end-of-year sale which almost completely mirrors our Black Friday video, so you can go check that out to see the best of the 880 games currently discounted, and while we'll kick things off with a publisher-focused sale, the rest of the list is going to be focused a bit more on games that we haven't mentioned in a while. Here are the 13 Nindies currently on sale at their lowest prices ever through at least December 27th. There's a lot of games to discuss this week, and since I know a lot of you will have some time off, we're going to do some of this a bit differently. While these are all definitely live through December 27th, most of them are also live through January 1st, so keep that in mind. If you're looking for some proven, high-quality indies, Team 17 currently has a great sale going on and features the following. If you're going to be sitting on the couch with some other friends or family members, and you're looking for something fun to play that is accessible to just about anyone, Overcooked 2 is half off for $12.49 and features online multiplayer as well. Moving Out is also half off for $12.49, and those two games will test the bounds of your friendship as you either work together to cook meals in the most ridiculous situations imaginable, or try your hand as a moving company with some of the funniest physics debacles around. If you're looking for some Nindy trifectas to get sucked into, two of the best that 2020 has to offer are currently on sale. Going Under is 25% off for 15 bucks and is a 3D dungeon crawler set in a hilarious world of tech bro startup culture. And Neon Abyss is a side-scrolling twin-stick shooter that takes place in a fun cyberpunk world, and both of these games feature procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! <laughs> Team 17 also happens to own one of the best 2D platformers ever made in Ukulele and the Impossible Layer, which is 70% off for $11.99. And if a slow, methodical, and super dark, super hard, Souls Like Metroidvania sounds up your alley, Blasphemous is also back on sale, half off for $12.49. Basically, their whole catalog is on sale with great discounts, so search for Team 17 by name, because their games rarely miss the mark. Here's a fun story. According to a post by a developer on Reset Era, Nintendo just changed their eShop policy and apparently there is now a bare minimum of $1.99 for all eShop games, which is a bit disappointing, but we'll see if that sticks before digging in further. As such, there is only one game that is currently 99 cents, and it is the hilariously fun Death Squared at 93% off. You'll only want to play this if you have a couple other players who can work through the multiplayer-focused puzzles with you, but if you do, this is a great way to spend some time together over the holidays. Horus is a heartwarming tale of a little robot on an adventure that plays out through just about every style of gameplay from the 8 and 16-bit eras, and it is a critical darling that is currently 86% off for $2.09. A lot of you have asked me about this game, and now, my friends, is the time to get it. Speaking of cute games with retro elements, Avo Cuddle is an adorable little platformer that Mikey of Nindy Nexus finally convinced me to play, and I gotta say, it is fantastic. It is quite literally a side-scrolling platformer about living avocados and one of the cutest games I've played since Yoshi's Woolly World. If you're in the mood for some smart platforming and just the right mix of action and adventure, you will not be disappointed in Avo Cuddle while it's 80% off for $2.59. And speaking of excellent publishers on the Switch, Annapurna Interactive also has a big sale right now, and there are three shorter experiences that I think are well worth your time. Gora Goa is a handcrafted two-ish hour puzzle game where you look at a screen divided by storytelling panels and have to rearrange the panels in the correct order, but over the course of this game, it really will get your brain humming. Consider this one that you'll play in a single sitting and pick it up while it's 70% off for $4.49. You know those games where you sit down, finally play through it, and when the credits roll, you say, Wow, 
I'm really glad I played that. That's how I felt after finishing a couple hour playthrough of Donut County as the first title that I finished in 2020. It's a smart story told through interesting means that will constantly keep you guessing and totally pays off in the end. The gameplay is kind of the opposite of Katamari Damacy. You move a hole around a 3D area on the ground, sucking things up, and the more you suck up, the bigger the hole gets. <laughs> That's what she said. I'm telling you though, everything about Donut County is wonderful, from the art, to the characters, and the dialogue, to the music. It's really a great all-around package. And I hope some of you pick it up while it's 70% off for $3.89, and after you've finished it, I want to hear what you thought. Because I think, like me, most of you will say, I'm really glad I played that. The last Annapurna title for the day is a bit longer, about four hours, and a bit more recent having only released back in April, but if you like suspenseful TV shows that constantly throw curveballs at you, I think you'll really enjoy telling lies. In the wake of an, uh, incident I don't want to spoil, you come across a laptop of pre-recorded full motion video confessionals from four individuals who are all somehow connected, and it's up to you to figure out who's not telling the truth. The cast is wonderful and the entire game is full motion video, with branching paths based on who you suspect is trying to get away with, well, again, I don't want to spoil it. A lot more people should be playing Telling Lies as it was created by Sam Barlow, who is behind the similarly excellent title, Her Story. Go check it out because it is currently at its lowest price ever, half off for $9.99. And finally, a game that is buggy as hell but I can't stop playing, one of the titles from last week's Nindies at Night stream, is already having a big sale, and that's Synthetic Ultimate, which is 33% off for $9.99. It's a sci-fi themed top-down Nindy trifecta with a level of depth that I am still unpacking. The UI is a total mess and the game crashes on me about a third of the time I play it, but this developer does seem trustworthy in their efforts to squash the bugs as this game is constantly receiving updates. The gameplay is stellar and features more variety in weapon loadouts than I've ever seen in a top-down twin-stick shooter. Only pick it up if you're willing to put up with some jank, but if you are, 10 bucks gives you a ton of game that includes procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! And all of the games from last week's Friday Afternoon Special are all still on sale as well. Sparklight, Dungeon of the Endless, Hypnospace, Outlaw, and a bunch of Nindy greats like Moonlighter and Dead Cells are all at their lowest prices too. So go load up our Black Friday video or just cruise the eShop for yourself, because there's some awesome deals to be had by all. If you see something that tickles your fancy and want to know if you should pull the trigger, ask about it in the YouTube comments or chat with us on Twitter at Nindy Nation. Otherwise, that's it for this supersized episode, and once again, I just have to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for all of the support along the way as we reached 1,000 subscribers. It's just a number, but it's a big number, and it wouldn't have happened without you, so once again, thank you. New episodes post on Tuesdays, and the podcast is hosted by our friends at the Nintendo Village, so for all of your Nintendo needs, go check them out on YouTube or the thenintendovillage.com. We won't be streaming this Thursday night because of the holiday season, but I suspect I'll be popping on from time to time, so keep in touch on Twitter and turn on your YouTube notifications so you don't miss a thing. This Friday may or may not have a new quick Friday afternoon special. We'll have to see what the eShop has in store for us, but everything else will be back to normal next week. Until then, friends, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 96. And whether you're looking for the lesser known indies that slipped between the cracks, the biggest titles of the year from independent developers, or anything in between, know that Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.